Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome to the course on uh, computer related drug design. We will continue on the topic of blocking. Uh, in the previous class, uh, I talked about uh, uh, how to use AutoDoc. Of course, uh, there is another software called SwissDoc also. So I do not have time to sh show that, but you can use that software as well. Okay. Um, okay. So let's go to this uh, inflammatory pathway. So we have the um, arachidonic acid produced. Uh, which gets converted to prostaglandin H2 by the COX-1 and COX-2 enzymes, okay, and the arachidonic acid also getting converted to uh, the leukotrains by the lipoxygenase enzyme. So, uh, there are drugs which are very specific towards the COX-2, um, okay, which are in the market like the valedicoxib, doficoxib, silicoxib. So, we can uh, uh, download the structure of uh, COX-2, okay, the crystal structure of COX-2 enzyme, it's called 1C. X2. So, if you look at um, your PDB, 1C X2, you can see cyclooxygenase 2, which is also called PG synthase 2. Okay, this is the one, um, it is there here, you can see this, and uh, okay, it gives you the literature as well. Uh, then uh, Okay, so this is uh, this one. Okay, this is the enzyme cycle of genus two, and uh, there is the ligand in that. Okay, so um, a selective inhibitor, a C five five eight. Okay, C five five eight is uh, uh, is a uh, selective inhibitor of uh, this cycle of genus two. Okay, now uh, then we can. Uh, use the software like AutoDoc, uh, we know the active site of um, of this particular enzyme where uh, these are the amino acids present in the active site. So, um, when we do binding of each one of these uh, molecules, okay, there are about almost 12 molecules which we have selected which are known to have selective and some of them are not so selective, but we know the um, activity of them that is IC50. So, we get the binding energy or interaction energies um, uh, using AutoDoc for these 12 of these molecules and here we plot their um, activity ok. As you can see here and uh, we see there is a very good negative correlation. So, as the binding energy increases uh, the activity also increases ok. So, this is quite good correlation coefficient. So, what is the use of this? Suppose we have another molecule which we think we can design um, which may be better active we can bind it to this uh, COX-2 enzyme and we can see where the binding energy or interaction energy comes and then we can sort of predict its IC50 whether if it comes here or here and uh, so on actually ok. So, this can be used as a nice predictive tool. Okay, now let's look at another example, you know, the platelet aggregation. Platelet aggregation is a very serious issue uh, which leads to uh, thrombosis. Okay, uh, platelet inhibition, endothelium prevents platelet and plasma coagulation factors from meeting the highly thrombogenic subendothelial extracellular matrix. Okay, so non-activated platelets do not adhere to the endothelium. Okay, so activated platelets adhere. Okay, that's the big problem. Uh, there are many drugs uh, which uh, are given for antiplatelet aggregation. Nowadays, aspirin uh, is seen to be known, sodium salicylate, dihydroxybenzoic acid, clopidogrel, okay, and so on. Actually, a lot of uh, substituted phenyl systems and all are there. So, antiplatelet activity of uh, many of these drugs have been reported in literature. And um, we we also have looked at uh, some compounds like this. They are called pianol, okay. Can look at it, it is almost like aspirin, uh, R1 and R2. We can put a lot of uh, 
um, substitutions here so we can get a huge number of uh, derivatives we can look at antiplatelet activity of these um, and um, COX-1 is an enzyme uh, which is known to be involved uh, in the platelet aggregation as you can look at uh, the um, pathway here uh, here comes the cyclooxygenase okay so COX-1 um, uh, we need to inhibit so uh, again if you look at uh, the PDB um, very nice 3D structure available of COX um, of um, COX-1 so we can um, take that and then uh, yeah we can uh, as you can see there are many COX-1s here there are many COX-1s this is the COX-1 um, it's a complex with the Murphy uh, Zolac and uh, this is another COX-1 okay mutant COX-1 uh, in uh, B Profen. There are many COX ones are there in the literature. Okay, we can download based on um, unoccupied. Okay. So based on uh, um, our requirement. Okay, based on our requirement, we can download uh, the tissue structure from PDB. And of course, uh, we can use uh, your Autodoc, and um, we have a large number of molecules uh, which we have synthesized phenol derivatives okay so we can um, bind all of them or drop all of them as you can see here docking to the cox one okay docking to the cox one here this is the cyclooxygen is one um large number of molecules docking to that so we can get a relationship between the binding energy or uh, interaction energy as we call it um, or energy difference between dock uh, and undock and then um, this is your uh, percentage inhibition of platelet aggregation again we see a nice negative correlation okay as the um, binding or interaction increases um, the activity um, or the percentage inhibition also increases so we can use uh, this type of target based uh, design also um, for designing new molecules so new molecule if I come up with a new structure um, I can dock it um, to the same enzyme uh, and then um, based on the docking energy or binding energy or interaction energy I can predict what will be its activity okay okay well, let's look at um, another example anti-hypertensive drugs uh, these drugs are used widely for reducing your uh, hyper uh, blood pressure okay there are certain beta adrenergic receptors okay there are uh, some angiotensin 2 receptors okay angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors of course diuretics generally these are very very popular of course uh, the doctor also prescribed diuretics as well um, so look at this uh, uh, beta adrenoge antagonist okay there are two beta 1 and beta 2 okay so there are non-selective drugs uh, they are called beta blockers uh, which may bind to both beta 1 and beta 2 or they are selective ones um, that is non-selective catilol, indolol, cavidilol, propranolol and, and there are beta 1 selective also acebutolol, atinolol, betoxolol uh, and so on actually okay there are non-selective beta 1 and beta 2 or there are selective beta 1 okay so as you can see synaptic um, um, sympathetic nerve comes in here okay and then uh, which goes uh, here and then we have the cardio cardiac myocytes so it basically blocks the beta 1 or it blocks both beta 1 and beta 2 okay uh, so again um, there are structures available uh, which um, okay beta blocker as you can see here Okay, there are many beta blockers, a lot of beta blockers, okay, as you can see, almost 25 of them are there. Um, okay, beta blocker, um, we have the drug, uh, propranolol, bound to that, okay, so a lot of uh, drugs are there, a lot of drugs. Very nice 3D structure available of COX. Drug called uh, propranolol, uh, bound to the beta blocker. 
and um, so uh, once we dock all these drugs to the um, active side of and then um, we plot uh, the IC50, PIC50 which got from literature and then uh, this we call it uh, uh, the intramolecular energy or binding energy or interaction energy again we see a nice um, correlation a more negative okay that is the activity less negative less is the activity so uh, very nice okay then uh, again uh, uh, involved in the hypertension there is another enzyme called angiotensin converting enzyme okay so these AS inhibitors produce vasodilation okay so what happens is uh, we have this enzyme AS in enzyme which converts A1 to A2 okay which leads to vasoconstriction increased blood volume all these things okay so um, A a1 is called angiotensin 1, which leads to angiotensin 2 uh, by this enzyme ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme. So there are drugs which uh, block uh, this uh, particular enzyme ACE, and so A1 doesn't get converted to A2, okay, so the vasoconstriction doesn't happen, okay. So this is how these drugs work, ACE, they are called ACE inhibitors, okay, there are a lot of drugs. Uh, benzepril, captopril, enapril, fosinopril, lisinopril, uh, ramipril and so on. So all these drugs um, uh, work towards uh, um, blocking this particular uh, enzyme called ACE, okay, angiotensin converting enzyme, okay. Again there are many ACE, just type ACE, so as you can see there are many many um, crystal structures of ACE here, um, there are many many crystal structures of ACE here, so you can be more selective towards what you want to have, okay, as you can see, okay, what you want to have, angiotensin converting enzyme and complex with lisinopril, this is the drug um, which is uh, binding to this uh, particular enzyme. Okay. You can see the lisinopril maybe here. Yeah, yeah. You can see the drug here. Okay. Okay. So um, we can uh, easily download uh, the structure of the protein, and then uh, we can uh, dock all these um, various uh, ACE inhibitors, and uh, there is literature data on the activity of uh, these drugs towards the ACE percentage inhibition. Uh, so you can see this dropped in ACE, okay, this is the drug dropped in ACE. Okay, so um, as you can see here, um, this is the binding energy, more the binding, higher is the activity, this is the activity on this axis, um, so a lot of uh, ligands and these triangles are the drug, drugs here, and okay. So you get a nice, uh, reasonably good uh, straight line with R square of 0.7, which is not bad. Um, so as the binding energy increases, the activity also increases. So if you are trying to design a new molecule um, for S inhibition uh, to prevent uh, the um, angiotensin 1 getting converted to angiotensin 2, all you have to do is uh, design and start docking each one of them and see where uh, their uh, binding energy comes and from there you will be able to predict what could be its activity and um, all this data is obtained from literature so from the literature data you get this graph and then uh, when you start designing new molecules we can use this graph for predicting the activity of new compounds so that's the beauty of uh, um, target based drug design okay so uh, another example we will look at uh, this is um, tubulin tubulin assembles and disassembles to form microtubules, okay, microtubules undergo continual assembly and disassembly within the cell. They determine the cell shape in a variety of cell movements, okay, cell locomotion, intracellular transport of organelles, separation of chromosomes during mitosis, okay. So there are drugs which prevent the assembly, there are drugs which prevent the disassembly, okay. Uh, vinblastin, vincristin, these are drugs that inhibit microtubule polymerization. Okay, so it does not allow the assembly. Whereas taxol, taxol, that drug binds to and stabilizes the microtubule. Okay, 
okay so it prevents the disassembly uh, so taxol is used in breast cancer ovarian cancer lung cancer okay so um you assemble disassemble to form these microtubules so there are drugs which um, prevent the assembly there are drugs which prevent the disassembly also okay uh, okay so as you can see taxol uh, binding to certain uh, mutated tubulins is taken from this uh, particular reference okay um so this is um, we have uh, the active site shown in this picture taxol binding into the active site okay the red ones are oxygens blues are nitrogen green uh, are carbon and white are hydrogen okay so um, uh, we have uh, several molecules um, binding to the um, a particular uh, protein and again you can see uh, we call it decrease in uh, uh, energy or uh, increase in the binding and a negative more binding the activity so the activity keeps increasing and then um, as it uh, becomes a uh, more better binding more interaction more uh, decrease in the after binding or uh, the activity value also keeps increasing so um, I am showing a lot of examples of uh, target uh, based drug design where we can um, um, okay do the binding of uh, various uh, uh, ligands once we have the um, protein of our interest protein of our interest can be obtained from uh, uh, your um, PDB database bank okay and uh, then we can perform the docking and I showed you in the previous class how to uh, do the docking uh, of course, uh, there is um, AutoDoc is a very good source of software, and also the Swiss Doc is also there, which can also do a good job. It is done through a web server, and uh, all the software belonging to yeah. So we can do the docking here also. Um, we can submit the docking. I don't want to spend too much time. So here we give the target. Uh, say we can get the nine nine these or. Yeah, so uh, we have this uh, particular protein. Um, and then here, uh, the other place, we can put uh, the um, ligand and then we can submit uh, for docking. Okay, so quickly set up. And then here uh, we can uh, put our ligand. Okay. Uh, ligand name Okay, so we can load the ligand and um, okay, so we have uh, loaded uh, both uh, um, a aspirin mol2 file 3v99 is a phylox file and then we can give the job name um, aspirin dash um, phylox and then uh, we can give my email id here and then uh, the results will come to you okay results will come to you okay start talking results will come to you okay the results from swiss doc comes to your email okay like this okay if you click on the results um, as you can see here um, you can see the um, binding energies between aspirin and phylox in fact that's what we, we gave uh, the 3v99 and aspirin uh, we gave uh, aspirin in mol2 format 3v99 as a pdb um, so we can uh, see this and here you can see that uh, the estimated delta g um, this gives the highest uh, negative binding energy 
and this is uh, all the cluster 0 ok and then cluster 1, cluster 2 and so on actually so um, we can see here where we can uh, click on uh, different uh, clusters ok so we can see the aspirin here as you can can you see the aspirin here aspirin is seen here um, ok the aspirin is here yeah, somewhere here are you able to see the aspirin there yeah you can see the aspirin here and this is the phylox uh, enzyme ok this is the output from the swiss dog um, so it gives you large number of uh, results and different clusters also it gives you so you can see how the aspirin binds ok you can look at different uh, clusters and it, oh, ok so aspirin has come down there um, so in different locations starting locations and then uh, it binds ok you can see the aspirin here ok so uh, we can download some we can uh, download some of these prediction files we can look at them in more detail um, which I have downloaded ok so we can look at the Okay, so this is uh, how the aspirin various uh, clusters. So generally, this this cluster seem to be the highest. Uh, that must be cluster zero and cluster one. Okay, um, so predominantly aspirin seems to be binding uh, in these places more than any other places. Okay, so this is the aspirin as you can see here. Okay. The other cluster is uh, cluster 1, okay, where aspirin is bound more. Yeah, here, here. So, cluster 0 and cluster 1 is seen here. So, predominantly cluster 1, cluster 0 and cluster 1, we can view them. Okay, so, SwissDoc is another interesting program which can be used uh, for uh, docking ligands to protein. Um, and uh, it gives you then the estimated delta G in kilocalories per mole. Okay, um, there are other softwares um, which are also which looks at uh, binding site analysis. There are, suppose you have uh, many proteins and you are interested to know what is the um, uh, relationship between those uh, protein active sites. There are some softwares. Okay. And there is a software called PatchDoc, and there is another software called MultiBind. Um, PatchDoc is a um, molecular docking algorithm based on shape complementarity principles. So I can uh, put a protein, um, and then I can put a ligand, and if we try to find what is the shape complementarity. So I can take the same ligand as a probe, and then I can look at uh, different uh, proteins. That's called a patch dog. Okay, another software called multi bind. So it aligns multiple alignments of protein binding size sites and then recognizes spatial uh, relationship or common binding patterns of set of proteins. Okay, so uh, that's called multi bind. Okay, multi bind looks at um, different proteins. Okay and then or we can up, uh, put in we can upload it as a zip file so it compares different proteins okay uh, and it will find out common chemical patterns okay the results of uh, multi bind again comes to your uh, email id uh, as seen here we can click on that and um, basically multi bind um, uh, looks at um, basically compares different proteins 
okay it compares different proteins and uh, see what are the common features okay in their active cells this is very useful if you are looking at families of protein and um, so and basically uh, in the example uh, we looked at um, the 3v99 looked at 3v99 and we looked at uh, um, 5KIR 3V99 is um, yeah 3V99 is uh, um, 5 lipoxygenase protein with the arachidonic acid uh, bound to it and um, 5KR is um, cyclooxygenase 2 enzyme with the uh, Vioxx bound to it cyclooxygenase 2 uh, is involved in prostaglandins and um, 5-lipoxygenase is involved in uh, leukotrans ok so so um, So we we'll get uh, a result like this. Okay, so the two proteins 3D99, okay, which is uh, the 5 lipoxygenase protein, and the other one is 5KR, which is a cyclooxygenase protein. It has Vioxx bound to it, and 3D99 has a arachidonic. So um, these two protein active sites are being compared um, hydrogen bond donors, aliphatic acceptors is there donor is there okay and uh, you get a score of about um, it gives you a score as well score of 10.0 which is low okay higher the score that means higher is their comparison whereas lower the score uh, lower is the value okay um so this uh, software is useful uh, if you are looking at uh, comparing different active sites of protein. This is useful. Yeah, this is this. Uh, this is useful. Um, if you are going to have a comparison of uh, different proteins and see whether the same drug may be acting um, on these active sites of these two proteins okay uh, because they may have similarity in their uh, active site structural features for example there are some proteins in the uh, arachidonic acid pathway um, in the um, prostaglandin called PGFS, PGIS, PGDS, just like PGES. So you, you can compare proteins. Um, then it says there are some common features. PGFS versus PGIS, PGDS versus PGFS, PGES versus PGIS, PGES versus PGFS. So it can give some sort of a score and say these are the common features uh, within this uh, protein. Okay. Um, yeah. So these these are the PGES, PGDS, PGIS. Uh, okay. So what is the common feature between these proteins? So we can use uh, the software called uh, MultiBind, and then um, the software may give results like this. Okay. Commonality between these proteins. So pairwise comparison, and then say gives a score. So these two proteins, PGFS and PGIS, um, have a common score. What is that PGIS, PGFS? Um, like I mentioned here, they all come in the arachidonic acid pathway. Okay, okay. So you have this uh, PGIS, PGDS. Uh, okay, PGIS, PGES, PGDS, and so on. So these are. Uh, what are the commonality between all these proteins? That's what uh, this uh, particular software will be able to tell. Multi-bind. If you look at uh, the other one, 
uh, the patch dog what it does is uh, it uh, takes a uh, molecule um, like a ligand and then um, it uh, takes it as a probe and see what is the shape similarity between that ligand and the particular molecule of uh, interest uh, sorry or a protein okay, so it will tell you shape complementarity it's based on that that's called the patch dog okay so this software is also very very useful so it doesn't do a docking uh, so it gives you a receptor protein molecule it gives you a ligand molecule you give the email address and then um, it does the job 3b9 uh, sorry so we can give this uh, so we can give a choose file here uh, we can again give a choose file here uh, for your ligand and then we give the email address okay and then uh, it does the job here so it gives basically looks at the shape complementarity between uh, the ligand and the protein okay so the receptor molecule we can choose uh, from our file 3v99 we have been looking at it for a long time okay pdb 3v99 So we can give a PDB chain ID example here or upload file. So we can say 3B99 and, and then here we can ligand molecule we can give our uh, um, aspirin as you all know. Okay aspirin mol2 file is accepted here I think. This is mol2 then I give my email ID. Complex type three default uh, and then to submit from okay so that's all that's all it is done uh, so the results of uh, patch doc which is a software that compares uh, uh, the structural features of the ligand and the protein that means basically um, whether it's got concave regions and convex regions and try whether they have a complementary regions and uh, predict whether the ligand will go and bind to that protein that is uh, given by patch dog and the results again come to your uh, email and as you can see here we were looking at uh, the aspirin and we were looking at uh, the file like oxygenase uh, uh, protein 3b99 so it tries to see and try to pre give a score okay big score small score and so on actually so patch dog and that, that sort of uh, comparison of uh, uh, a ligand like aspirin in this particular case and um, protein 3b99 that's a file like oxygenase so uh, patch dock can be used for molecular docking. So it sees uh, whether uh, there is a convex patch, concave patch, and whether there is a complementing convex and concave patch in the ligand. So we can say possibly uh, they could be interacting at that places. So it could be uh, protein ligand, it could be two proteins, it could be drug protein, DNA, so many things we can do that actually. So it's just based on shape complementarity criteria so if you have a concave and if the uh, another ligand has a convex it, and the matching so we can say there could be a uh, interaction or binding here so this sort of gives you the score on that actually okay so uh, this is another software which is uh, useful when you are looking at ligands and proteins let me send to this particular integral. so um, this is also a very useful software. Okay. So this multi-bind um, looks at uh, several protein binding sites and uh, then uh, it says what is the similarity. Principles like hydrophobic, hydrophilic, polar, non-polar, 
moves on. Whereas the patch dogs looks at the ligand and the target protein and see what is the commonality based on their shape. Okay. As you can see, they are all web server based. So we upload our problem and the results will come to your email ID and we can start analyzing them. So they are all free of charge. Okay. Uh, so we will continue more on the topic of uh, computer drug design in the next class as well. Thank you very much for your time.